This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and this is the Arcos 5 Internet Tablet running Android. Now it's pretty similar in name to the old Arcos 5 which was a media player and internet tablet and the big differentiator here is the fact that it's running Android just like something like the Motorola Droid for example or the Nexus One. First we're going to take a look around. As you can see it's really thick compared to the last generation Arcos player. This is the 7 inch one. But as you can see it's gotten even thicker, gee golly, you know, and the Arcos 5 is a bit thinner than this Arcos 7 was. So this is not something that's going to slide unobtrusively in your pocket. You have the Arcos proprietary connectors here just like you had on older versions of the Arcos and this plugs into things like the DVR station, the battery dock. This side here, just shiny plastic. You always find a way to give you something that shows a lot of fingerprints. Shiny metal back. This is not removable. Uh, there's a hard drive inside a conventional spinning hard drive and a battery that's not user accessible. Power button, volume buttons here. 3.5 millimeter stereo jack. Micro USB for transferring content to the player. And here on the back, you can barely see it, there's actually a little pop out stand. This guy is really rough on your fingernail to pop out, but there it is. And that props it up so you don't have to hold it. Though it's fairly big and thick, it's not really a heavy device. This is available in a variety of hard drive capacities. This is 160 gig, which sells for $399. We got this one from Expansus USA for review. Thanks guys at Expansus. They're very reputable. And Arcos is a French company, and these products are still more popular in Europe. So Expansus, which does a good business in importing products, is an easy place to get this product from. You've got a built-in speaker here so you can actually hear your videos and your music without plugging in headphones. We're going to compare it to some other large devices, large screen devices now. This is a 5 inch display, really 4.8. We're going to compare it to, this is the HTC HD2 which has a 4.3 inch display. This guy's display is so large it starts to almost negate the point of having something like this. But there are advantages to this. For example, this has 160 gigs of storage versus much less storage available for the HD2 and it has very good video playback performance. In fact, it's better than the HD2, the Nexus One, or anything else running on a 1 gigahertz Snapdragon. This guy runs on an ARM Cortex A8 CPU and it has a dedicated 430 megahertz DSP chip as well and it really is super for playing video. We'll compare it to the iPhone 3GS here. and you've already seen it compared to the Arco 7. So when you take a look at the device you'll see something that looks familiar if you've used Android smartphones before. You've got a variety of Android applications here, the same ones that you use on an Android phone. For example, here's Twidroid, here's Move, um, Contacts, all that kind of stuff. So yes, you can sync this to, to Gmail to get your PIM data on board. This uses something called the Apps Lib instead of just the straight Android market. Uh, Arcos has picked out applications that are compatible with the device. Why there would be a compatibility issue, I'm not even sure, other than the fact that this lacks a cell phone radio. This has Wi Fi, it does not have 3G. So here we are on Apps Lib, which again is their version of the Android market. It's similar, you can look at all applications or by category, like entertainment and communications. You can do search, you can update the applications you already have. A couple of other filters for, I guess, Arcos approved, new apps, best rated, that kind of thing. So, pretty much all the Google apps are here, but there's a few that are missing. And unfortunately, one of them is Google Maps. This does have a GPS built in. There is a GPS application that, after a trial, you're going to have to pay for. And it kind of reminds us the way Arcos used to nickel and dime you with uh, their last generation players. You could have a lot of functionality if you paid extra for this plugin or that plugin or this hardware accessory or that one. So it's just a little bit of that going on here. So GPS, yes. Software for navigation, you're going to have to pay for it. Google Maps is not even available on the App Slip. So unless you find a way to transfer it from the Android market, maybe if you download it on your Android phone, that's how you get it. Also missing is the YouTube player, which is a little strange. So instead of using the, the old Arcos um, custom web browsers, the old Arcos devices ran a, a proprietary version of Linux and had custom browser solutions. This guy here uses the same browser that you'll find on any, on any Android phone, and that's Google's WebKit browser. It's a very capable browser. We'll take a look at it 
but you're not going to get any flash or any support for any embedded videos on web pages using using the YouTube mobile player. So here you have the standard Android web browser. This is an 800 by 480 pixel display, which is the same resolution, say, on a high-end phone, again, like the Motorola Droid, the Nexus One, the upcoming HTC Incredible, but you've got five inches to view the web page, so it's it's much more viewable without having to zoom. This is a resistive display. That means you can use your fingernail, but there is no pinch zooming. If you want to zoom, you're going to have to use those on-screen controls. This runs Android Donut 1.6. It's not the latest version of the Android OS, so getting pinch zooming support, even if this had a capacitive display, would have to come via Arcos developing their own driver. But that said, here's the web browser, and it's, it's, it's quite fine. It's, it's quite good. Since Arcos is primarily still what we think of as a, a portable media player, we're going to take a look at the video playback features. You can look at movies on internal storage, uh, play over network. There's a TV scheduler if you happen to buy the DVR plug-in, which attaches to your, your input video, say cable, TV, whatever it is you have. And there's the video recorder app. So right now we're going to take a look at the Transformers video that actually came with the HTC HD2. It's an 800 by 480 pixel high quality, high quality audio, also video, which plays well on the HD2 and in fact on the Nexus One, but you'll notice if you actually try playing it and watch closely that the audio and video are not always in sync. On this guy they are perfectly in sync. It's a really nice sharp screen. There is a lot of glare, especially it seems the plasticky layer over the top picks up glare like crazy, which is a bit unfortunate. But it's good color, very good sharpness. The speaker's pretty decent. You can see you control moving through the video just by grabbing the scrub bar there. You can control the audio. Pause it. So that's the video player. This supports MPEG-4. It does H.264. It makes you register the device before it'll actually start playing H.264. Again, that reminds us of the old days of Arcos where you don't get all your plugins unless you register. But if you want to watch web TV, uh, listen to web radio, and play H.264, which is very popular MPEG-4 encoding format, you do have to register the device. It doesn't cost you anything, though. Take a look at the music player. This does have very good audio quality through headphones. So here we are in the music player. You have your choice of playing music off internal storage again, network, or using the built-in FM radio. Got an album art right here. This is the last thing we were listening to. There's album art. Obviously, playback controls. You get the track name, the artist name. So in terms of Android applications, again, other than the missing YouTube player and maps, you've got pretty much all the normal stuff that you'd expect, the contacts, the calendar, you've got the gallery application, um, and all that. Other Arcos add-ons include the web TV and web radio apps, which actually just handle streaming TV broadcasts and streaming radio. The, the TV broadcasts are not the most exciting. They're mostly government TV, even if you go and look at international channels, because these cover not just the U.S., but across the world. And some funny things like the Monterey Bay Otter Camera, if you want to watch Otter Cam. So right now, not the most exciting features. Pretty much what's exciting here is Android and the ability to add applications from the Android market. We're now up to about 38,000, and most all of those are addable here. And the really great video playback here, and it's very also a very good music player, too, with very good music quality. Again, this sells for about $400, and it's running on Android 1.6. An 800 by 480 display. It has an ARM Cortex A8 CPU, and it's available with a bunch of different storage options, including some flash storage options, and some models even have a SD card slot. This one does not. I'm Lisa for Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website to read the full review.